robbery is very heavy in the community. I mean, just any second, a bandit might walk in the door and rob you. I would say that the average citizen, especially the ladies, are afraid to get out after dark. And that would have occurred to me if they were going to kill me. I, I just know they feel like that. But the only thing I felt like it, if I hadn't told them to go ahead and get it, well, they probably would hurt me. No little book book on it there because the crime is here. Now the thing that we should try to do is that they should try to do downtown is try to get somebody out here and do something for these people. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Lord have mercy. And you're supposed to send your kids to school with their kids. And this is how they think, the adults think. Yikes. <clears throat> In a nightmare, you know, fifty-year nightmare. Work for. I mean, if they don't have anything to do, yeah, they're gonna commit crime. If they don't have anything to do, they're gonna commit crime. So you're gonna send your kids to school with kids who, if they're not occupied, at every one thousand percent of the time, right? They're gonna commit crime. Yo, I mean, that's it's a threat. A, it's a low-key threat that he's what he's saying. Your well, auntie, you, you write about the black fathers, man. You write yeah, about the matter right. of fact. <laughs> oh, but they were back in the home back in the day before, you know, 1980 and shit. I'm telling you, you'll, man. You'll, you'll like, this, this reminds me of, like, I, I mean, I used to see these guys on a train. They used to have this T-shirt, and it used to say, um, hey, like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sell you stuff. It's better than robbing you. Like, people actually used to have these t-shirts. And it's like, yeah. it, it just kind of, like, tells you the character of what they're doing. It's like, I, I'm not really a nice guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'll rob you, but yeah. I'm trying to be a nice guy, right? It's like... Yeah. This, these, uh, these, um, these people right here, though, man, like, these are adults. And they're talking about somebody from somewhere some place in our, mind, our imaginations needs to come here and help the people that are robbing people. Like, what? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I don't what to say. 40, 40 seconds into this. <laughs> yeah. Everyone hit the like button, man. Everyone smash that like button. Everybody, um, everybody smash the like button. Everybody, um, support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or the Super Chat. You don't get this no well. You can't like stop it, man. Don't even don't even put nothing in the chat. Well, I, you could get this. No, you don't even. No, you only get this here. Three of us book on ourselves because the crime is here. Now the thing that we should try to do is that they should try to do downtown is try to get somebody out here and do something for these people. You know, give them something to work for. I mean, if they don't have anything to do, yeah, they're gonna commit crime. In his book, Crime in America, former Attorney General Ramsey Clark wrote, when you put poor education, poor employment, poor housing, and poor health on the map, and then put high crime on the map, you've marked the same place every time. We breed our crime. In Dallas, that violent place on the map, where more than half of the major crimes occur, is the ghetto. It covers less than one-tenth of the city, but contains most of the rape, murder, burglary, robbery, and assault. And black people. Most of it is black crime. In 1972, Damn. blacks were involved. They said that shit. Yeah. They oh. did say it. So this is why they try to say, it was racist back then. Because this is the only thing that racist that I could possibly find in all of these videos. Maybe that they said it was black people, and now they... Don't say it's black people. But other than that, nothing race. Mm. None of these black people are going to complain about anything legitimate that a white person has done to them. Burglary, robbery, and assault. And most of it is black crime. In 1972, blacks were involved either as perpetrators or victims in almost two-thirds of all violent crimes. Drive through the narrow streets in the major crime belt here, along Hall Street near Roseland. You pass the Busy Bee Cafe, the Red Door, Black Gale Domino Parlor, the Congo Club, the Ascot Room. This is a pastime sanctuary for the Black Wall Street right here. 
Mark yeah, Parker exactly. Know. And I'm and I one thousand percent believe that this is what Black Wall Street was like. Yeah, the one in Tulsa. One thousand percent believe that this is what they allegedly got burned down. Mm-hmm. Especially Boy. when you know the real story about how how it started. Hall Street near Rosewood. You pass the Busy Bee Cafe, the Red Door, Black Gale Domino Parlor, the Congo Club, the Ascot Room. This is the pastime sanctuary for the men who consume barbecue, hot links, ripple, and Thunderbird wines. So God why damn. is it also the sanctuary for most of the city's crime? You have more people on the street. You have more people in this area than you do have in the other other areas of Dallas. I'm sure that would account for part of it. Now we're supposed to believe that this guy is some fucking racist. He's just a fucking cop. He and just he a cop. The hood. This is just his job to fucking police and the fucking criminals right here are black but we're gonna but fast forward you know he's supposed to been have been some racist in the minds of black black. it's a number of things behind crime for one thing most of these guys uh, can't get any jobs you know the young (laughs) fellas can't get any jobs and they're idling around and so forth and uh, it's just a problem. About ninety percent of the major crimes committed not committed by man, the people in the ghetto, the man, people, no, you know, the area. But it's just a, a poverty area, and these young boys don't have any food or any money, and they're going to take some means of getting it. Well, I don't believe it. It's really you can classify it as a low income area where you have a high concentration concentration of people in one specific area, and these people don't have any place else to go but out on the street. Then. Naturally, you're going to have more crime. I live in South Dallas myself, and I, I was, just, you know, uh, among the same people that he's talking about without anything to do, but I didn't resort to crime. Well, this is a different generation that we're dealing with now. When I was speaking of the present or the past, or we're just speaking we're about, about in general. general. In general. Yeah. In general. Well, in general. Yeah. well this includes that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, like, I had the same yeah. opportunity that you had, which was very, very limited. Yeah. Yeah. None yeah. at all. But I didn't resort to crime. <laughs> So none of these people can work at Watson's Cafeteria or Jim's Liquor uh, Line or the slang, uh, pigtails and oxtails, pig ears. All these black businesses that can't nobody get a fucking job. Got a whole goddamn black Wall Street to the south. There ain't no opportunity. The average family income here is less than the government established poverty level. You can buy a used car for ten dollars down and no credit check, or stay in the Ross Avenue Motel for two dollars fifty cents and up. Power Men and suits from the finance company or police. Haircuts are ninety-five cents. Positively, no personal checks accepted. The story is much the same in South Dallas on the other side of the central business district. Bitterness and resentment are easy to find. A dude out here—he doesn't resort to crime because he—he he resorts to crime because. He be trying to get some of the things that 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 whitey downtown won't let him have. Right. That's, that's another that's, thing. That's that's what they're doing here. That's what the young people are doing. They say it's a, a dope problem, a, a prostitution, but I don't think that's basically what it is, because they're robbing in North Dallas and so forth. But they don't say this is due to dope and so forth. You can't get too much of this uh, good dope out here because the people don't have the money to buy it, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, this is not what a dope problem <laughs> you know, is. No dope dope is well, because they, they can't afford the dope that the people uh, have in Highland Park or far North <laughs> Dallas or oh, places yeah. like this. But it's true. I've been dealing in the service agent business for the last 49 years. And the service station is one thing that people expect something to happen, but don't know when, what time. When we were going to school, we were afraid to go to jail. But now kids don't care nothing about going to jail. South Boulevard is not Every far single away. fucking platitude home- that we would use today has been used since 1973, 1963, 1953, 1863, 1863, 1863, 1863, 1863, 1863, 1863, 
One of those. Which, if they didn't have this public housing that they're bitching about, they'd be all shacks. be living in huts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like fucking, uh, uh, what the, the, Brazil, those, what are those things favela. called? Those are favelas, favelas, like a favela in fucking Brazil. If the, if the white man didn't build these fucking projects for them. And it's such a fundamental truth. Like, mm -hmm. you talk about gentrification, you move the white, the glider man in, glider people into an area, and it may be fucking shit, but it, over time, generally speaking, improves. You move Overnight. some people into an area, into Overnight. a prefabricated area that is, you know, like, just newly built for their habitation, and it is destroyed over the next five years. Detroit. Yeah. 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 Detroit was one of the wealthiest cities in history. Uh, in 1950, by 1975, it was a shithole. Salute to Aster J, man. He says, ah, and Gladys didn't have nothing to do. They created the NFL, the NBA, MLB, and NHL. Yeah, man. Institution builders, man. It's done, and a sprawling public housing project will be erected in their place someday. One of those who has seen the ghetto deteriorate over the past 46 years is Theodore Greer, a successful... This guy's seen this for 46 years. This is 1973. <laughs> <laughs> but in South Dallas, they will continue to die, and a sprawling public housing project will be erected in their place someday. One of those who has seen the ghetto deteriorate over the past 46 years is Theodore Greer, a successful bail bondsman who has worked in this poverty area since 1926. I doubt very seriously that there is very much hope for this area ever developing again to where it once was. It, I believe it'll go industrial uh, expressways or manufacturers or something that's coming to be pretty close to being out there. What about the people here? Are they scared of uh, some of the things that have happened in the past? Well, the people who's here now, I don't think scared of because they, the ones who will, I think, be around here now, you can play the part. See, quite naturally, the one who's afraid left and the one who plays the part comes back and comes again. It looks like South Dallas is gradually dying out unless we get you know, better police protection out here. I mean, it's just going to be so that a businessman will be scared to open up his doors. One of your main answers to high crime is going to be more involvement. The people get more involved and report these crimes to the police and, and uh, getting more information to the police when we get on the scene of a crime. The more the people help us by telling us what they see, the more we can cut crime. There was no snitching in <laughs> It's the same. It's never been different. It's just literally the fucking same. Like, it's never been different. Eternal recurrence. Yeah. It's the just a pile of lies we've been told. It's always been this way. Oh, shit, man. Salute to I L R L R S. Salute to Dig Tell Javon. I wonder if Gladys realized sons think they are the reason for literally negative set every negative set outcome and give them no credit for any positive set outcome. Hot Black has the most hilarious son accent. Oh, so there you got the hilarious name, bro. Wow, man. This is this is listen, man. <laughs> Nothing has changed. And all this is here, man. That that's why this channel is so important because even a lot of conservative channels, they still talk that the black from the sixties was walking around in bow ties and suits, and the black man was in the home, and everything was all right. <laughs> right. They still talk that shit. Don't you hear that on us? Press one if you still hear that on other reputable. It wasn't like the black man was in the home and it wasn't all right. The black man wasn't in the home in nineteen fifty-five. No, he wasn't. He wasn't before that either. And you know what video I keep thinking of, Ak, is the one where you... Uh, um, do you remember what I'm talking about? It, it has, like, the group of some some people, like, doing, like, proto-drill rap. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do you know what... You gotta, I gotta figure out what video it is, because that one fucking cracked me up. Oh, yeah. I, I got... I remember that one. Um, I, I think it's... I've been trying to find um, it. I, 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 I drop... I'll find it for you, though. Uh, um, but, yeah... Uh, um, 
Yeah, man. Like this is he said. Um, Jesse Lee Peterson says that stuff. I I didn't know that, but yeah, yeah. Now that I think about, it, he does kind of say some of that stuff, man. Like everything was all right. But I think he's talking about like black so, people weren't complaining about the stuff that they complained about now, even back then. And it's true, they were. <laughs> yeah, it checks out from what we're seeing here. <laughs> they were complaining about. I don't see any black people complaining about white people chasing them around and the white person fucking them over or the white person. They, they, I just hear them talking about crime and sons and shit like that. Crime, poverty. How are the two related? Clearly, not all poverty causes crime. Otherwise, all the poor and only the poor would be criminals. Let's be frank with ourselves. We're in the ghetto. We don't have any money. They said this is the ghetto, and they make us feel like it's the ghetto. It's getting worse, in my opinion. And the reason why I say that is due to the street conditions where the city or the contractors are dragging with the work, not getting it finished, and uh, the police can't get in and out as rapidly as they need to. That's the first time I'd ever been out. I have never been there. I have never bought him. Is it then learned in the slums, like a rhyme for skipping rope, inherited, motivated by a frustrated desire for the good life as shown on television, due to broken homes or welfare, due to a sense that men lack power over their destinies, or promoted by the fatalistic bravado men use for survival in the ghetto? Definitely, poverty and crime is interrelated. The guy is not going to let his family go hungry, you see without robbing uh if he have to kill somebody he will Damn. Shit. Thanks. uh Aunt, do you think sons have ever asked themselves collectively like uh hey if poverty is the reason for all this crime then like how come you know, white people before they invented the world weren't Actually, like mass nah, criminals. Nah, nah, no, nah, not even reflecting, white. reflecting. No, 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 they were fucking not reflecting on nothing, man. You talking about reflecting and be, no, no, it, it ain't happening. No, I don't, they, they just not, and and you shouldn't expect that either because you're driving yourself crazy, man. You would, you would, you would go mad thinking about that all like. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would right. you release yourself from that, brother? Yeah, <laughs> you are absolved. Yeah, well, see, I, I used to, I used to think help. like, oh, like Thomas Sowell, like he's kind of reflective, like reflective on this, but he's really on just some fucking bullshit too. Like, the yeah, only one who's reflective yeah, about it right. is Hawk Nation. That's the only. He's blaming his shit on the hillbillies. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly, like such. Like, I need to, I need to oh, him. But I saw something bullshit. today. It was saying that it, the reason that some people say axe is because the old Scottish and Irish used to say axeth. Some pile of fucking lies. I don't think that's why. Pile of fucking lies, dude. Well, there's there's some truth to it in the sense that uh, the framework for culture was was set by it. But I mean, the the bullshit monitor that you guys have, as far as soul being wrong, it's more a cope. Um, it's a, a lot cult. of yeah, it's a, yeah. a lot of what Soul does, though, you have to give him credit for this, is that he's coming up with an alternative theory to the narrative. He doesn't necessarily believe the alternative theory, but it's to come up with an alternative theory. To yeah, I'm not saying he's wrong about everything. It's just I think he believes it and he means well and he doesn't hate white people. Those that's what I think about him. Yeah, I, don't think I think he Soul recognizes it's a problem. Yeah, I don't think Soul hates white people. I, I still think though that like that. He doesn't understand that any excuse, black people won't take it. He gave them an excuse unwittingly. Yeah, You're correct. Right. That's right. Yeah. But I mean, again, um, fried chicken comes from Scotland. You know, they're right. part of the cultures that, you know, he's not entirely wrong, but I understand why you guys reject him. Mm -hmm. I kind of do as well in that. I mean, is, if he's talking about economics, brilliant. But when he starts talking about some of the sun culture stuff, you, it, when he talks about IQ, he goes on for an hour about IQ, uh, how it might not be, it, you know, it's more uh, not heritable, but other things. You're like, come on, Thomas, come on. You're too smart yeah. to not see this. Yeah, yeah. No. gliders from the British Isles are not responsible for 1352. Like, come on now. <laughs> no, 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 no. But they do like think about it. language is culture. You know, and if you're using someone else's language, then you're in their culture. Nah, so, DNA is culture because here's the thing. How do you, Haiti, what, what, hillbillies in Haiti? 
with hillbillies in Jamaica. Well, right. <laughs> But you're in our culture. You know, you would have never built this stuff. You're you're an addition. No, but again, I, mean, I agree with you guys. Are they, are they hillbillies in Australia, Queensland, Australia? Teaching us <laughs> no. Like, no, but like, there's still still about? Right. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Um, salute to my man, um, Corey, man. He says, Oh, oh, salute, yeah, salute to my man TCT in the building. Shout out to you, bro. Salute to you, bro. Um, pre um appreciate you, man. Um, yeah, man. I, I just listen, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever makes you like, listen, and I guess Thomas Soul is far more learned than me. He's he's a much greater man than right. me. He's a fellow at the um what's that institute or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, huh? Hoover Institute, Hoover Institute. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to like be like, oh, like in a slick way, put myself on his level or anything. But all I'm saying is that, yo, like sometimes the truth is it you don't have to be a philosopher to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me tell you a story, man. One time I was, um, this is chick. I, I don't know why I fell in love with this stripper, but it, like, I don't know. I, I was hanging out at the strip club because my buddy he owned the strip club, and I was hanging out there. And this chick, she she just captivated me for some reason. She was a little fucking hood rat, whatever. Blah blah blah. And I went there a couple times, and I was you know, you know, just wrapping her up and shit, and just rapping, you know what I'm saying, and rapping and wrapping her up and shit. And then one time I brought my boy there with me, right, and. African cat, right? He, he was, he, he was, he was like, and I was like, yeah, man, I like shorty, shorty, bad as shit. But we in the strip club, so he on strip club time. So he like, yo, shorty, let me get a dance. He took her in the, um, he paid for um to go to VIP room. And he fucked her, and I had been up there three times, and I hadn't fucked her yet. Just rapping. <laughs> you just gotta. Sometimes it's you make things harder than they really are. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, there's a quote from Orwell. He says, some ideas are so stupid, only an intellectual would believe them. And I think yeah. that's part of part of Soul's problem, even though Soul is himself an anti-intellectual. Yeah, yeah, sometimes well, it's just you just you just it's just right there. You don't have to think about it. I'm trying yeah. to rap to this chick. And if I, if I get, I'm I'm in, I'm because I liked her. So I was I wasn't thinking of her as a stripper no more. And he comes and he's just thinking of her as a stripper because he don't give a fuck about it. He, let me let show that. Let me get the VIP room. You went the fuck there. It was like, boom. And I was like, oh, okay, damn. He snapped me back in reality. I was like, oh, shit. What the fuck am I doing? Hey, sure. You ever really think about why people would be asking you for dance and not asking you? <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, it's very simple, man. A long time ago, someone thought of designing Detroit after Paris. <laughs> I got frizzed over by a stripper. Detroit <laughs> once was called the City Beautiful. It is now called the murder capital of the United States. Uh, of the we'll 10 biggest us. cities, Detroit has the highest per capita homicide rate. Last month was the worst for killings in the they history of They had 89 Detroit. murders in one month. In Detroit in April, it's always been the same. It's it's just fucking a pile of lies. I swear to God, dude, it's always been this way. Surely it's the gliders. Insane, and it's got man. nothing to do with gliders, like at all, in any way, shape, or form. They couldn't put that up now. This is no way Detroit will put these numbers up now. How is this still I, on YouTube? Like, I'm surprised it hasn't been wiped off YouTube. It's just there. Right, man. It's that. Well, it is wiped. You gotta look for this stuff, though. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. you gotta. You this stuff don't yeah. just pop up. It's not gonna be in your feed. <laughs> Last month was the worst for killings in the history of Detroit. There were 89 homicides, one for every dot on the map. 90 percent involved blacks killing blacks and whites killing whites. <laughs> Okay, what percentage of that was white killing whites? <laughs> right. Most of the victims and killers were men and boys. Blacks. Yeah. One of the killings took place here near a high school. 
On April 25th, at this bus stop, one boy, 15 years old, shot and killed a 17-year-old boy with a revolver. On April 23rd, two brothers playing cards began to fight. Their mother tried to intervene, and in the scuffle, she was shot dead. Oh, shit. On April 19th, a man and his wife had words. She stabbed him. He died two hours later. I think it'd be a glider. In other crimes of violence also, Detroit is among the statistical leaders in robbery, assault, and rape. New Yorkers are sometimes called blasé. This shooting in downtown Detroit was dramatic, but it attracted a small audience. As in many other cities, the central business district is not what it used to be. Some people describe it harshly as a zone of decay. At any rate, business has declined, with much of the commerce fleeing to the suburbs. The old major hotels are said to be attracting fewer clients. One department store cut back its downtown selling space. Another announced it will close its downtown branch. <laughs> First-run movie houses folded one after another. And now there is none downtown. Grand closing. However, on the southern rim of the central business district, a prosperous convention complex has been developed. And there are plans to add to it. It is a self-contained area for visitors with auditoriums, stores, restaurants, and hotel accommodations. There is no need for visitors to leave the area. In fact, some people in Detroit advise against it. The result is a sort of convention ghetto, but it's convenient, comfortable, and lively. Yeah, it's just, you get over with that some people. And this is when you get the person that says, oh, I love Detroit. Detroit was great, man, back in the day, man. Detroit wasn't like it is now back in the day, man. If I if I never left my, you know, convention ghetto hotel. And... Yeah, there would be no reason to, and, and you'd be advised not to. I used to go to Detroit all the time in the 70s. There wasn't any black crime. Fathers were all in the home, and they all wore top hats. At dusk outside in downtown Detroit, the streets already are almost empty. It is no exaggeration to say that many people are afraid to be out on the streets at night. Detroiters know about their own city's reputation. The homicide rate has gone up during good times and bad, when there was racial tension and when there was not, when other crimes increased or decreased. Homicide is a growth industry. In 10 years, the homicide toll increased five and a half times. Last year, the number of victims was 751. Fucking In recent years, <laughs> homicides have... No breaks. <laughs> oh. Wow. And do you know how directly this correlates with the rise in the sun population? It is in, uh, a one-to-one -one correlation if you see it. <laughs> There's actually graphs where they show you where it's yeah. uh, juxtaposed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Whew. My God! In ten Hawk, years, I put a, the homicide toll. I put a joke in the back chat about Detroit. It's from a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie. Uh, it, it's one of the funnier jokes if you get a chance to show it. Will increase five and a half times. Last year, the number of victims was seven hundred fifty-one. In recent years, 
homicides have been rising in the city of Detroit for 1971, 72, and 73, almost every category of crime in the city of Detroit declined for three straight years, with the exception of homicide, and that has continued to decline year after year. But that's not a problem that's unique to Detroit. It's a problem that I am personally convinced that the entire state of Michigan has, as do most of the other major urban areas in the United States. You don't say. The fear of physical harm is evident in many ways. For example, this store's bulletproof shield runs from counter to ceiling. And they got a white guy going in there. <laughs> it's not peculiar to Detroit. Uh, and this look suburb, at the hairy arm, swarthy fucking goddamn Middle East. <laughs> okay, it's still peculiar to Detroit. <laughs> And this suburban housing area with its fortress-like walls is planned to provide security for its residents. A toll gate screens out strangers trying to enter. However, as far as homicides are concerned, the major threat is not from strangers. Most of the homicide victims are friends, relatives, and acquaintances. And they are killed as a result of some type of emotionally violent argument and i can give you example after mm. example of that mother shot her son because uh well to get specific she had a, an emotionally violent argument with her 17 year old son he ran out the kitchen door she was so upset she grabbed a pistol out of the kitchen drawer and started shooting at him the 14 year old who idolized his older brother stepped in between and she killed the 14 year old Never hit the 17-year-old. Now, that's first-degree murder. A wife became apprehensive because she heard some noises at the front door, fired through the front door, and killed her husband. Damn. That's manslaughter. And another, probably the worst extreme. Uh, I think it's some good detective work would um, find out that that might have been a murder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> became apprehensive because she heard some noises at the front door, fired through the front door, and killed her husband. Now, that's manslaughter. And another, probably the worst extreme, uh, not too long ago, and I'll change the names, but Lisa uh, shot and killed Kevin. She obtained her father's pistol out of the bedroom dresser drawer, and they were playing with it. Lisa was three, and Kevin was one and a half. This was a boy killed accidentally while he and his friends were playing with a gun. The other boys tried to hide the body. These police photographs illustrate the most common stories of homicide, friendship, marriage, a blood relationship, ending in a short burst of rage. There were two men in the life of a woman who lived here. On April 28th, one of them, a friend, came to visit while she was out. Shortly afterward, her husband arrived with a gun. There was a fight upstairs, and the friend was killed. The husband was arrested, but it was for her friend that the woman grieved. Homicides today are linked to the rioting, burning, and looting in July 1967. Of the 53 people who were killed in Detroit that month, 43 were victims of the turmoil. For both races, the violence produced thoughts of self-preservation. The new fears brought on a wave of gun buying. Many guns were bought legally with registrations and permits. Many more were acquired illegally. The entire city became an arsenal. What is the estimate on the number of um, handguns here in, in the city of Detroit? In the city of Detroit? Yes. Oh, the conservatively, probably a half a million. That's uh, about one for every three persons. That's right. Or almost one for every household. Uh, and it's evident 
For example, in one of our very nice residential districts inside the city of Detroit, they had seven burglaries not too long ago. And in those seven burglaries, they obtained 14 pistols. And there are fences in the city of Detroit we have gotten information on uh, where they have put out the word, so-called word, that they won't buy anything but pistol. They don't want any televisions or stereos or radios or anything else. They only want firearms. Each year, the Detroit Police Department confiscates about 30,000 firearms used in crimes. They include handguns of every description. We have German Lugers, Derringers, small revolvers, Magnums. Look at the shit they were using compared to the shit they're using on the streets now. Wow. Um, 